Uh, back in April, uh, we were early May, we had a opportunity to go as a church down to Honduras. We partnered with a ministry called Mount de Horeb, which actually Miss Becky Venters, a longtime member of Brookwood, has gone down there several, uh, more than several years with her son-in-law and Catalyst Church to build uh, a home and to run a VBS. And so we've supported that over the years, uh, her financially in that and heard from her. She's actually away and not going to be able to join us this morning um, with, uh, on a vacation with her, um, with her grandchild. But we this year had an opportunity to go down there ourselves. And so we took a team down there to do the same sort of work, partnering with that ministry. And I'm going to invite a couple of those members up here. Ben Friedrich and Steve Rain are going to go ahead and come up this way. I'm going to share. And so uh, just as they're coming up here, uh, you guys are going to grab that microphone right there, by the way, uh, when you get up here. Um, just know that the church supports, uh, there's about $4,000 to build uh, one of these block homes. Uh, the church cuts the check for that, and the church also helps each member with a portion of that support. And so I just wanted you to know the investment um, that you have put uh, in the teams uh, and that sort of thing. If we were not to send a team a year, but wanted to continue to support that ministry down there, which is near and dear to many of our members' hearts, it would only cost $4,500, and then uh, five Hondurans would build that church uh, or build that home as a part of their ministry. And so uh, the ministry itself goes into a community. Uh, they have they could stay in one town and never leave and build houses until Jesus returns. Uh, but they choose periodically where to go, the groups they minister with. Uh, they're looking for pastors in those communities that can disciple the families, churches. A lot of logistics have to, to, to work. Uh, and then they make their choice, and then they marry up teams to go and support this work. And so they, um, I want to say they've built over 13 years. They've built something like 400 homes. Uh, they build about 30 a year. And so it's a, a really great ministry. And so I ask these guys... Uh, to give us some feedback. And so why don't you um, both take a moment and describe the work that we did on our trip and what a typical day might look like. Uh, so we were building a house, and, and um, of course I'm in construction business, and they do it so much different down there, but we went with the attitude we'll do it <laughs> like they ask us to do it. So it seems like some of that work was harder uh, to do that way, but we it just come right together. And, of course, there was a lot of people there. In this particular trip, I've been several times. I think uh, Ryan actually found a picture of me down there in, like, 2000 or 2001, I think, uh, on another trip. But uh, the people were really uh, in that, around that family and everything was there to help. A lot of people in the community came by to help. And, I mean, they even cooked for us about every day. <laughs> it was really really probably one of the sweeter trips I've been on. Ben, why don't you talk about your perspective on that and then maybe a little bit of what the ladies did with the church uh, in, on the Friday, Saturdays. Yeah, I think the, uh, the work there, as, as Pastor Ryan already mentioned, was um, it was a well-oiled machine. I mean, we showed up to the job sites. Everything was pretty much laid out. Uh, we were just trying to plug in, uh, obviously, not all of us had the construction background, so you know we're I'm fumbling around, and, and a lot of the team was um, just trying to be helpful. Um, in addition to that, uh, a lot of eating during, throughout the day, as was already mentioned, uh, the hospitality uh, from the families there. And so, while all of the whole team was doing construction throughout, uh, at least on the last couple of days, um, Lindsay and Amanda would break off and, and do the um, VBS for the children, and so that was just a sweet moment. Uh, the kids uh, really gravitated to those two ladies. They did an outstanding job, and uh, uh, it was neat to see that uh, each and every day. So first day, we, the guys were kind of, you know, hanging out outside and uh, cooling off, and then the next day, we kind of got a little more involved uh, with the kids, which is a, really a sweet moment. Yeah, so it's hot down there in May. I think it's the second hottest month for them down there. The Lord provided us with a lot of shade trees. And so I do see a lot of pictures from teams that go down there and they have no shade trees. Uh, and so it wasn't as hot as it could be. But there's also a huge language barrier down there. And so the ministry 
uh, working with translators. There was a little bit of a language barrier sometimes that presented itself, but but really uh, the ministry is established down there, so they're familiar. They've built several homes in this community over the last several years, and so it's just exciting to see people. Um, one of the things that stuck out to me was that everyone ha- is probably envious of this family that's getting a home uh, compared to what they have, but it didn't come across that way, that there was genuine excitement, wanting to help and that sort of thing. F- family members and, and friends would hop in uh, and work with us, and so that was that was really, uh, to me, that stuck out to me about that community um, and their heart to, to help each other out. Uh, guys, when when you think about this trip in the months and years ahead, what were some, what would be some of the things that stuck out to you in terms of what the Lord was already doing down there? Um, yeah, I'm gonna let you answer. Okay. I don't know the better answer. You know, again, it's interesting to see that. I feel like I've, I've had you know, getting involved in something like this, you know, how much are we going to be able to do, uh, build a house in a week, that, that was shocking to me, how, how is that actually going to go down, uh, the ministry is strong down there, you know, the bus has left the station, it's already in motion, you know, we're, we're just enablers coming down, the difference between 3,500 to 4,000, right, we got free labor, and we're able to plug in and just be involved uh, with that ministry, so, you know, we weren't, we weren't, the great uh, U.S. saviors uh, to to provide a house for uh, Hondurans. That, that that ministry is already in motion, and so it's it neat to just be able to plug in, see how they operate, and uh, to do things the way you know they intended to do. Um, you know, one of the things that I guess that really stuck out to me is is this this small I don't know 15 by 15 house. Right? It's a very small one. There's no running water. There's no bathroom. It's it's literally just a cinder block um, home. You can kind of see it right there, and that was the family. Uh, but the gratitude for that one block home, uh, from what they had to, to that, and really the sense for, I didn't really think of it this way, it wasn't just the home, it was the security that that home provided. And that, that home could be locked, right? They don't have ability to secure their things. And you know now, uh, Jose Luis, who was a fisherman, could go and leave his family and they would be protected by that small little home, and that was, that was significant for them. Uh, one, I'll just say one, one anecdotal story that really jumped out at to me is, uh, seeing another home, not a brick home, and and I kind of shared this one of our devotionals at night. Uh, seeing plastered on the door, um, uh, "Vive Cristo," which is Christ lives. And although this particular family was living in in squalor, uh, they had a message on their door, which was Christ lives, and that was the most important thing for them. So it was just interesting to see uh, that that was that message was being proclaimed, and so that was a humbling experience. Yeah, so so uh, Ben mentioned uh, being safe in the home. One of the big things out there was, you know, he could go to work, and and uh, we actually gave the family a lock or, or put it on the house and then give them the key for it or whatever and unlock it. And uh, it was pretty significant that he could go and work and leave his family there, and they would be protected by, by this lock and behind the locked door. And uh, one, one thing that I really... I, I've never experienced over there before was, and, and, it, and, and I probably just missed it before, but um, the owner of the house, he was really excited about that house. I mean, to the point that just as soon as we got done with the concrete one day, the next day he was washing the floor and sweeping the floor and <laughs> cleaning up around, you know, and, and outside their homes are not a lot of grass and stuff, so they track in and out, and they were keeping that house really really clean from, from day one. So they were really excited about the, the, the house, and, and it seemed like the whole community was excited about them having, getting their new house. Yeah, one of the things, misconceptions about North American uh, mission work is that we have a lot of the answers, and so we're going to land on the ground and help them. And so, uh, now that was clearly the case. Steve's knowledge in building homes, we probably could have made some things a little bit easier. Uh, however, we wouldn't have gotten the real experience, uh, not that I ever really want some of those experiences again, um, of mixing uh, concrete and that sort of thing. But one of the things I'll highlight, in just my, my part in this, is when we landed, uh, Mike and Ginger Green, who oversee that ministry, had local men and women who were servicing the camp that we're at and the ongoing ministry 
Uh, they're leading devotions. They're growing in their ability to lead prayer, evangelism, make connections in the community, even lead Bible studies. And so it really is, you land at the airport and you get picked up and you're a part of this ministry that is ongoing, which really exists whether or not you come or, or not. And so it's such a, it's such a blessing to, to join in with them with what God was doing, to be a little bit of a blessing and, and wind in their sails. Uh, to share some stories and to share some time and work, but knowing that 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 work continued. If you were to envision what Mount Dehorb has been able to do, imagine that we got together and wanted to start Brookwood, and me and a couple of us came to this property, and there was nothing. The makeshifts of one home, but not completed. And we camped on this area until we got my home built. And then we started building another facility, and then this church, and another facility. They've got as many facilities for ministry there that we probably got in, in church facilities. Maybe not as tall or, or huge of a structure, but it just it, it blew me away that they had the foresight to begin planning what was going on there. And Mike and Ginger are a little bit up in age. They're going to transition in the next five or ten years, and they will most likely hand this, this ministry the buildings, the facility, all that's going on there to local Hondurans, the Honduran church that is down there. And it, everything else that's around it pales in comparison to, to what they've been able to do there. And it's just a blessing to be able to support and encourage them uh, to see it at work and just be encouraged when we come back here that, man, listen, they, they show up every day. Uh, they believe in the Lord. They pray for the Lord to do his thing. They're faithful to what God has called them to do. And he continues to expand their reach. He, they never make a, a single peep about themselves. It's always about God. And so it was such an encouragement uh, for us as we came back. And so um, w- next week, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Zimbabwe. But uh, we wanted to get these teams up here. And as we did for the Charlotte trip and for the Cuba trip, I uh, wanted to uh, pray for this. Um, for this ministry that's going on there. So if you can can join with us as we pray a blessing over the Honduran work down there. Father, we thank you for the work that's going on, Father, in Honduras, specifically the work that's going on through Mike and Ginger's ministry at Mount Dehorob. We pray your continued sustaining and blessing down there, Father, that you would supply their every need, not just in terms of bricks and mortar, Lord, but the people that are necessary to see this ministry go. I think about while we were there, Lord, a Bible study that had just started back with the local police officers uh, that's grown to over 100 people coming on Friday night to hear the gospel and to worship and to enjoy just playing a game of soccer with each other. Uh, Lord, I thank you for the ongoing work that goes on through their ministry that has its uh, partnerships all the way back here in the States, not just in the in North Carolina, but all over the, the Southeast. Father, that churches are supporting and praying and going down there uh, to see this work going on, Father, and that they they have a heart not just to bring North Americans in, but to bring the Hondurans along as well. And Lord, being able to see this this take uh, to, to to take shape in terms of how it's ministering down there, and um, continuously men and women who are who are stepping up in ministry, continuing to do what uh, they probably never realized they could ever do, Lord, just because the faithfulness of Mike and Ginger Green, God. We pray for a safety for them always, Lord, but a continued blessing on their ministry, God. And when they come home here in the the wintertime, Lord, that it is truly a time of visiting with their family and and they're rejuvenated and that the work continues year after year, Lord, down there. And I pray for our church as we look for ways to support and encourage, even though we may not be able to go every year, we may be able to supply and see a home built so that your kingdom continues to spread forth with the Honduran people, God, and that you would bless that Hondurans. They're hardworking. Lord, they're, they want to work for themselves. They want to take care of their families and to uh, take care of their country, God, that you would continue to bless them uh, so that they're able to do that. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen.